What's good? Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Byte for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. Let's get to the show, and the new MacBooks can't come soon enough, not only for us, but for Apple as well. The latest Gartner report estimates PC shipments fell 5.7% overall this quarter, making it the eighth consecutive quarter of decline and the longest duration of decline in the PC industry. Now, Apple's Mac shipments have dropped 13.4% compared to the same quarter last year. Ouch. So, if you weren't sure about talk of this post-PC era, yeah, it's been here for a while. Now, Apple even rescheduled its upcoming earnings call from October the 27th to two days earlier on the 25th, leading many to believe that an announcement for the new refreshed MacBook Pro, MacBook, and iMac lineup will happen on October the 27th. Instead, it's not official, but you can mark that date on your calendar for now. And really, what's the best way to shift attention away from another quarterly decline in iPhone sales? Guess what? Brand new Macs two days later. Now, I'm still curious about how good the OLED touch bar will actually be with this rumored new MacBook Pro, but reality is that it probably still won't be enough to turn around Apple's PC shipment fortune significantly. But maybe brighter days are ahead for the iPhone. According to USB analysts, they expect the iPhone 7 to help spur an 8% growth for Apple in 2017. And if you want to be even more optimistic, they say the new 10th anniversary iPhone, or what we like to call the iPhone X, will bring even a bigger boost in fiscal 2018 with a 16% year-over-year growth. Now, these numbers have not been confirmed with Nosher Tongas yet. Next question. And in Apple patents that could be coming to an iPhone X near you, Apple has been granted a patent for embedding light sensors directly into device displays. And this is important because it will help create a full screen iPhone without its current big black forehead and chin bezels. This design change could save millimeters on the final design specification and could open up the doors for a true full screen iPhone X display. And another recent patent awarded to Apple describes a super resolution multi-sensor camera with cube prisms. It details a three sensor camera array that's capable of achieving a maximum image quality in a minimal amount of space. There are space saving benefits to the patent, but its folded camera design can also offer more room for extended zoom capabilities. Again, it's a patent, so we'll wait and see how it may or may not be integrated. There's also been a constant back and forth battle in the courts between Apple and Samsung that started back in 2011, and it's a fight over three iPhone design elements patented by Apple that Samsung had earlier been found to copy in 11 of its phones. Now, the case has finally reached the Supreme Court this week. Lower courts ruled Samsung should pay 100% of the profits earned from those phones, while Samsung thinks they should pay less. Now, Sammy may get its wish as two of the justices agree that design is part of the reason someone would buy a phone, but not the entire reason. The Supreme Court's ruling is expected to take two to three months, and they will not decide the final amount owed, but will pass it back to the federal courts to rule on a revised sum. How fun. Also, Apple recently won an appeal for $120 million in its case against Samsung again, but this time for the slide to unlock feature, which they no longer even use in iOS 10. And you know Sammy is trying to hold on to anything they can after the train wreck that was the Galaxy Note 7. I called it the best phone of 2016, and I stood by that until, you know, it started exploding. Not once, but twice, even with its replacement units. Now, the Note 7 is officially dead. Samsung has completely stopped production. It's dead donezo. They're even asking people to send back their Note 7 in a fireproof return box that will only be shipped by car. Now, this can only be a good thing for Apple, but you can't really talk about Samsung without Apple. They were arch rivals. It's that competition that really led to Samsung rushing out the Note 7, but this could be really the end of that rivalry. And before we go, I always have to show love to you, the Apple biters. How many of you have an Apple Watch or just got one? Well, you know, I return the Series 2 watch because I'm not a swimmer and I personally don't use the GPS feature on trails, so it just wasn't as useful for me compared to my original Apple Watch. You know what? I'm gonna wait for the next one. Now, there are plenty of you who have a first gen one or got your first Apple Watch, and I've got something for you. Check out the Go Power Watch from our friends at Connex. It's the first portable battery for the Apple Watch that you can take with you on the go, and it has the capacity to charge your Apple Watch six times. You can even use it to charge your phone and an Apple Watch at the same time. It has an inductive charging spot specifically for the Apple Watch. It's pretty sweet, and it's the first of its kind, so all you have to do is watch last week's show. Tell me what I called two iPads joined together from Apple's rumored magnets patent. I even touched the box for you, so you know it's real. Plus, you can go to their website for 10% off everything using the code AppleByte10, and it's good until Saturday, October the 22nd. 
All right, that's going to do it for this week's show. You can email us at theapplebyte.cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong, and I will announce the winners next week. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you all next time for another Bite of the Apple. Ha, 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 ha.